Jumping into the number five spot of the top five best budget wireless gaming mice of 2024 is the Razer Orkai V2. Coming in at a price tag of $53.49 at the time of filming. And if you want to check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's talk about the Orakai. Even though $53.49 is its current price on Amazon, I've seen it as low as $49.99 fairly recently. For the sensor, this is using Razer's 18K optical sensor, which is a great sensor. This has a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, 18,000 DPI, 450 IPS, and 40 Gs of acceleration. Now, build quality here is great as we expect from modern Razer, maybe not past Razer, but they're doing great nowadays, and the V2, even though it's a little bit older, is no exception. No creaks at all, and we've now had this mouse for well over a year. Overall, fantastic fit and finish. The entire top shell can also be removed to expose the battery location and the USB dongle storage, which is a big thing. The design is also very attractive. It has contrasting black accents and very sleek angles. Now, this is an A-shaped mouse and is fairly small. However, it has a nice palm bump for the support and height is also nice, having a comfortable place to rest your fingers. Now, I palm grip, and I have average size hand, like very average. I'm literally like 5'9", my hands are like perfectly average, although it's not all average. But I palm grip the mouse, and even with this smaller shape, it feels great. So really, whatever grip style you're doing is probably going to be good for this mouse. For color options, you have three. You have black, white, and pink. Now, let's talk about how this slides and glides. Now, this has... Virgin grade PTFE, 100% skates. This has a long band across the top and another sizable skate on the bottom of the mouse as well as a skate around the sensor. Now, with this design, it glides nicely. Really, no complaints. Like, there's no real noticeable drag. It just does really well. For the most part, Razer gets their skates almost always perfect. There are definitely exceptions. For connectivity, obviously this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB type A dongle, or you can even use this wirelessly with Bluetooth, but don't use Bluetooth for gaming. You won't get its full pulling rate. So when you're gaming, you definitely wanna be using the dongle. Now for battery life, this is powered with a battery, like a AA or AAA. There's two different batteries that you can choose to use. And if you use lithium, it cuts down on weight even more. So if you buy a separate lithium battery, AAA or AA, I would recommend a AAA lithium battery. That's where you're gonna get the lightest possible weight. Also, the lithiums will probably give you more battery life. Now with that, a AAA lithium battery, this is gonna give you around 240 hours, which I think is great. Also, while it's definitely a negative that you have to use a battery, this is how they save on cost and you really are never going to run out of batteries. Just keep a few in your desk drawer, pop them out, pop them back in, and in pretty much 20 seconds, you're getting back to the game, which is actually, I think, kind of a pro. For programmable buttons, this has those two extra side buttons on the left side, which is pretty standard for the segment, and then the other being the scroll wheel. And that is it. Switches here are Razer's Gen 2 mechanical switches. They're nice and satisfying, not overly light, but pretty much right there in the middle. I think most people will like these switches. Scroll wheel here is nicely tacked out. They didn't do a mushy bad job on this. In fact, this has a better scroll wheel than some of Razer's other more higher end mice. Now for me personally, they're spaced a little bit far apart, but the tactility is good, so I'm not gonna knock it too much. Now for the weight, this comes in at 65 grams with that lithium AAA battery or about 84 and a half grams with a double A battery. Overall, if you're using a lithium battery, that's actually a very good weight, which is why it's on the list. This is the best wireless gaming mouse. This is the cheapest wireless gaming mouse I would buy. And for that money, you're getting a heck of a mouse. But yeah, except for the Logitech G305, which I think this does better at a similar price point, this is a phenomenal wireless gaming mice for the price. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which is the Razer Death Adder V2X Hyperspeed. This comes in at a price tag of $59.99 originally, but this has actually been dropped since it's a little bit of an older mouse now to $50. That's a pretty good deal. The sensor here is Razer's 14K optical sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, 14,000 DPI and 300 IPS with 35 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is solid with a very minimal design being almost entirely made of matte black plastic, except for a few glossy accents. This also has a very prominent texture, feeling almost chalky, but definitely not uncomfortably abrasive. I actually really liked that feeling of the texture. That was very good, especially since my hands tend to sweat quite a bit. As for the shape, this is a right-handed ergonomic mouse and is definitely the biggest on the list without a doubt. And it's not my preferred size and shape for my medium hand size. And while the fit in my hand is actually very, very comfortable because it's very 
large and ergonomic, it is a larger feeling. You do feel like you're gripping something large. Now, like the Death Adder V3, it has a very, very similar feel to the grip, which I really liked that one. This one I like a little bit less, but it's also like a third of the price. Do keep in mind though, this is a heavier mouse and the Death Adder V3 is definitely a much lighter product. So I did prefer that one, but if you add a lithium battery to this mouse, it changes it substantially. Now for the skates, these are 100% PTFE with two on the top, one around the sensor, and then one large skate around the bottom. This glides well. It's more controlled due to its bigger footprint, but really no complaints here. As for connectivity, this is wireless with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. And this also has a Bluetooth connection if you so choose to use that. And similar to the Orakai, this is a battery operated mouse. So there's no wired connection and this essentially has that infinite battery life. If you keep some batteries next to you, you swap them out so quickly. That is definitely a pro. I've done that a few times during gaming and it's a whole lot less of a hassle just pop a new battery in than it is to plug that cable in and if it's not an ultralight cable it's kind of going to degrade your gaming experience so that can actually be a pretty big pro for programmable buttons this has two standard extra buttons on the left side then two more on the side of the left click which is definitely an interesting design the two on the left click are angled slightly down, which makes it harder to use in game and kind of a stretch for your fingers unless you have bigger hands. But for DPI and productivity, they are definitely nice to have. And actually, I would prefer to have them than rather not have them because something like editing in Premiere Pro or just on desktop, being able to change those shortcuts, do things like that, that is actually nice, but probably wouldn't use them in games with my normal sized hands. If you had large hands, possibly. For the switches, these are Razer's Gen 2 mechanical switches. Even though they are the same as the Orakai, the way these are implemented makes them quite a bit lighter with a slightly higher sound, but they still maintain that crispiness. Overall, very nice. I think everyone will like these switches. The scroll wheel here is also very similar to the Orakai V2. It's a bit lighter, but it has nice tactility and pretty similar spacing, so my feelings are pretty much the same as the Orakai. Now, weight here all depends on the battery again. With the regular AA battery that this comes with, which is non-lithium, this weighs in at about 100 grams, which is a considerable amount. However, it definitely feels lighter than 100 grams with that AA because it is a larger mouse. So it feels more similar to like 80 grams, not 100. So don't let that absolutely turn you off of this. With a lithium AAA, this will go down to about 84, 86 grams, which for the size of this mouse is actually pretty dang light. Now, not like the Death Adder V3, but it's not $170, so yeah. But with that, moving on to the number three spot, this is the HyperX Pulsefire Haste. This has an MSRP of $79.99, but now is pretty dang consistently on sale for 60 bucks. And again, for current pricing, check the links below. I don't control the pricing on Amazon. For 60 bucks, this is a heck of a mouse. This is quite a good mouse. The sensor here is the 3335 sensor, which is fantastic when implemented well, which HyperX did do. Absolutely no issues with the sensor. This is a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 16,000 DPI, 450 IPS and 40 Gs of acceleration. The build quality here is great, super well put together, has a symmetrical shape, and overall it's just a very pretty mouse with that nice matte grippy texture and it has those glossy accents all over it, which let me tell you in person, this mouse looks a whole lot more expensive than it actually is. I really like the look of this kind of skeletalized mouse. There's no creaks or loose areas even after a year later of owning this. Balance here is also really good. This is a much lighter mouse than the previous two with a slender shape. And due to the lower weight and decently large footprint, this is a very accurate mouse. Overall, the feel is really nice for my palm grip and the way it sits in my hand is nice and comfortable. For the skates here, they're 100% PTFE. There are two on the top and two on the bottom. Due to the design, this mouse has a little bit more friction that you can hear, especially when moving down, although it still glides and feels pretty dang nice, with maybe just a tad of drawing in the up and down directions. But there isn't any unevenness, which is a very important thing. Now, for connectivity, you can use this with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle or actually wired, but no Bluetooth connections. And that is wired with a USB type C, so that's nice. Battery life with RGB on is 60 hours hours here. If you want to extend that a little bit more, you turn the RGB off and you get considerably more. For programmable buttons, you can actually program the left and right clicks, but that is all. So just two here. The switches here are the TTC Golden Micro Dustproof switches here. They are the heaviest on the list, which does give a level of precision. But for me, I almost never accidentally click, so I do prefer a lighter switch. 
However, I wouldn't say this is like fatiguingly heavy. I very rarely ever use a mouse where it's too heavy. I have used mice that it's too light. That kind of might help your buying decision slightly. Although personally, again, I prefer a lighter click. However, for sniping, especially if you are like a FPS sniper, this mouse actually does really well with that because of the very precision feel that you get from this mouse while still being able to like whip around. Let's not over exaggerate that this is still a very lightweight mouse, still an FPS style mouse for sure. The scroll wheel here is tactile, but the tactile bumps are a little far apart for my liking and a bit vague. It also doesn't feel as refined as either of the previous razors. However, the weight here is great coming in at only 61 grams. This overall is a mouse that feels like a whole step above the previous razor mice. And for $10 extra, it might be worth it in your budget if you have the money to push it up to this one. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which is the Fantec Aria XD7. This is an amazing mouse coming in at the highest price mouse of this entire list, right at the top of that price point for budget wireless gaming mice at $78.80. Now the number one spot is actually a little bit cheaper, but this Aria XT7 was actually my daily driver for quite a while and is one of my favorite mice of all time, bar none. We're not talking just in the budget category. We're talking of all mice. This is a phenomenal mouse. The sensor here is the 3395 sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS and 50 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is really good. No crease, feels a very well built and has two different magnetic shells, one with hole cutouts and one with just a solid piece. So pretty cool to like choose how you want it to look and how you want it to feel on your palm, which is cool. This also has dongle storage inside, which is a massive pro. Now the balance is where this starts to get amazing. In hand, this feels unreal. Literally the first time I picked this up, I felt that this was the egg shape that I'd always been looking for. The grip here is fantastic. Great for lifting off while not feeling uncomfortable at all. This feels like a much more expensive mouse than it is. Very impressive and I definitely am in love with this mouse still. For color options, you can get this either black, white, or pink. That's a very interesting, like, that like all of these mouse don't do a lot of crazy colors. For the skates here, these are virgin grade PTFE. One large pad at the top, one large pad at the bottom, and a skate around the sensor. There is some drag in the up and down movements, but I'm being really picky. I do mean that those are very, very slight this design of the skates does make for a very nice glide. It also glides at a very medium speed, which I think is very good for most people. This is a very easy mouse to recommend. For battery life, this is wireless with either Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. This hits about 40 hours with normal use, charges via USB-C, and really we've had no problems ever with the wireless connectivity. And again, we've had this mouse for a little over a year or somewhere around a year. For the switches here, these are the KLGM 8.0 switches. They are very very crispy and have a deeper pitch to them. Overall, I really like the click feel. Switches feel great, really no issues. For programmable buttons, we only have those side buttons on the left and that's it. The scroll wheel here is nicely tactile and also has closer together bumps, which I really, really like. Not as good as some of the others on the list, but I still really like it. For the weight, this comes in at 59 grams with the cutout shell or 60 grams with that non cutout shell. So a very lightweight mouse but an extremely balanced feel, glide, everything. It just really was done quite well. Now, before we jump into the number one spot, we have an honorable mention that's also from Fantec. It was a very recent release of their mouse. This is the Helios 2 XT3 V3, coming in at a price tag of $79.99. More expensive than the Aria, but unfortunately not better than the Aria, but if this mouse in the future goes on sale, maybe 50 bucks, 55 bucks, check the links below for that, then this would have been on the list. But at the current price tag, it's not on the list. Or it is, but it's an honorable mention. So essentially, this is like a wireless BenQ mouse, but doesn't have BenQ prices and is not quite as refined as a BenQ mouse. But if you really want the shape, this is pretty dang similar to like the BenQ U2, which is a brand new mouse and not even close to that price. It glides very smoothly with no noticeable drag, is only 55 grams, and the basic design feels great in hand. Now the thing that holds it back for me are the clicks. They just don't feel as good as all of the others on the list. They're not terrible by any means, they're just not quite as crisp, and delicious clicking is just so much better 
uh, on the other mice. That definitely brings it back, and for $80, I don't think I would pay that. Well, I did pay it, but I don't think I would if I was a normal consumer. But if you want a super lightweight mouse that's very like a BenQ-esque in its shape, then this might be a great pick in the future if they drop that price or if it goes on sale. But with that, let's jump into the number one best budget wireless gaming mice of 2024. This is the Razer Viper V3, coming in at a price tag of only $65.99, and I think Razer is absolutely the king of releasing phenomenal products sometimes, but with a freaking awesome price tag. They've been doing that a lot recently. $66 for this mouse is a steal, and it just came out. Okay, this is using Razer's 30K optical sensor. This hits a 1,000 hertz pulling rate or 8,000 hertz if you get their hyper pulling uh, like dongle for it. It is sold separately and it takes an immense amount of battery life from the mouse, but it's, you know, it's there. Up to 30,000 DPI, 750 IPS, and 70 Gs of acceleration. The build quality here is understated in terms of design being fully black with a glossy Razer logo and glossy accents around the base, but it is very attractive. It's like a Volvo. It's like not shouting in your face, but once you really look at it, it's like, wow, that was, that's, you know, it's elegant. It is elegant. And I think it's the perfect continuation of the Viper, it still holds the exact same DNA. If you're used to a Viper, you're probably going to love this. This is a symmetrical mouse and the build quality has no creaks, no rattles, and it feels solid and is very confidence inspiring in game. So full pass there. Palm gripping this actually feels great as well as a relaxed claw grip and is a bigger mouse with its lengthwise, but the palm bump isn't too tall, so there's enough height for me to rest my fingers comfortably on the sides of the mouse. It's kind of like the Goldilocks for that Viper shape. Obviously, the DNA of each mouse is going to be its shape, but this one, it's just, it's just a dang good mouse, especially on a budget. Like, I can't get over how good. This mouse feels like it's in like a very high tier. Uh, not 66 bucks, I'm gonna tell you that. For the color options, you get black. That's it. Be happy with it. Skates here are 100% PTFE with two small skates on the top, one around the center, one large skate on the bottom, and this glides extremely well. Okay, so yeah does really well. However, if you do end up pressing a little bit harder, it does kind of drag against not the skate, but the body because you're pressing it in to the mouse pad. That only happens when you're pressing very, very hard. And really in game, I never really noticed it. So not a big deal. It glides very well. For connectivity, this is wireless only with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle and no Bluetooth. You are gonna game on this mouse and you're gonna be happy gaming on this mouse exclusively. This is only powered via a battery. So again, no charging capabilities, but again, keep some spares around. Yeah, even with a battery, this feels like a extremely high-end mouse with literally the only compromise being that you have a battery. <laughs> yeah, it's that good. The switches here are again, Razer's Gen 2 mechanical switches and they're implemented very well here. There's very minimal travel, very little wobble side to side and they are really crisp. More immediate and solid feeling than the other Razer mice on this list. This is one of the best implementations of these switches from Razer. For programmable buttons, this again has the two standard side buttons on the left, which are uniquely spaced further apart from each other, and there is a button behind the scroll wheel. As for the scroll wheel itself, there are really distinct closer together tactile bumps, which I really enjoy Overall, a very solid scroll wheel. Pretty much everything on this mouse is solid. Now, the weight with the stock AA battery sits at only 83 grams. Now, I want you to understand that 83 grams, while it is a lot for a AA non-lithium battery, is extremely good. Now, really the only con here is that it doesn't natively have a AAA slot like the five and number four spot Razer mice did. I wish they had implemented that here, but they didn't. So what you can do is get an adapter for a AAA battery, then get a lithium battery, and that's how you're gonna get the lowest weight. And that'll get you 70 grams, maybe slightly under, for that weight and the size of the mouse and the feel, this doesn't feel too heavy. Remember, it's not about always having the lightest mouse possible. It's about having the right balance for a mouse. You can have a large mouse that's incredibly light, that's too light. Overall, an extremely impressive mouse that impressed the living heck out of me. But again, if you wanna check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. We also will have the honorable mention linked down below so you can check it if it's in the future and it's on sale, check it out. But yeah, this is Consumer Tech Review. I'll see you guys in the next video.